I do want to reach out to the developer community to let them know that Oracle is delivering technologies in open source that they can use today for building state-of-the-art microservices applications. Hi, this is Sagan Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us Will Lyons, a Senior Director of Product Management at Oracle. Will, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you, Swapno. Pleased to be here. Uh, last week, Oracle announced uh, Heldon 2.0. First of all, I want to understand what is Heldon and what role it pay, plays in the tech stack that people consume. Heldon 2.0 is our second release of Heldon. Heldon is a set of Java libraries for building microservices. So it enables developers to build very lightweight microservices in Java. There are two flavors of Heldon. Heladon SE, which is our smallest, most lightweight package, uh, which provides a functional programming style. And uh, we have Heladon MP as well. Heladon MP stands for micro profile. Heladon micro profile supports the micro profile standards for which extend Java EE and Jakarta EE standards for building Java microservices. Heladon MP uh, supports the MicroProfile 3.2 standards. Heladon 2.0 uh, takes the existing Heladon release and uh, makes some significant improvements. Um, we've uh, added new features for developers. We've added new features for reactive uh, Java microservices. Uh, we've updated our MicroProfile support, and uh, we've also added support for something we call GraalVM native image. Uh, GraalVM native image enables, enables you to compile a Java application down to a native executable, which starts up very quickly, uh, consumes very little memory. That has existed in prior releases of Heladon, in Heladon SE, the SE functional programming flavor. Um, with Heladon 2.0, We've extended GraalVM native image support to the Heladon MP style of programming as well. So those are the new features in Heladon 2.0. Uh, and what is the release cadence for Heladon look like? Is it like you know a specific release cadence, or is like release when ready? Uh, we, we do we do a series of releases when ready. Um, we've uh, we tend to you know release as we have requests from users for functional updates for bug fixes, etc. Um, this is our second major release. We've had several double dot releases over the years. Oracle is also doing a lot of open source. So uh, when you look at Helidon, is there any open source components that you're using? Is there any open source uh, version for it as well? Yes, excuse me. I, <laughs> I neglected to mention this. Helidon is an open source technology. Helidon is completely developed in open source, delivered in, in open source under Apache licensing. Um, so it is an open source technology. It leverages open source components uh, like Jersey, for example, uh, like Eclipse Link uh, and other technologies. But yes, it is fully a fully open source technology, as is Coherence Community Edition, which will be talking about shortly. What we traditionally see in the open source world is that you have a commercial product, which is which has a lot of additional features that customers need. And then you also have a community edition, which is available for free of cost, which people can either evaluate or community can use or community can contribute to. So is there the same chemistry with Helidon as well? Yeah, uh, in the case of Helidon, uh, all of the technology currently is available in open source. So we supply an open source technology and we provide support th through that technology. There's a number of support options. Uh, so any uh, customer of WebLogic, any customer who's a commercial customer of WebLogic or Coherence can get Oracle support and standard Oracle support service levels for Heladon. Uh, and also community support is also available for Heladon uh, for uh, those who do not have commercial licenses for WebLogic or Coherence. Uh, in the Coherence side, community, Coherence Community Edition is a new release. So we've taken our existing Coherence product, which is an in-memory data grid offering, which enables you to create 
a distributed data grid, which can be used as a cache by external uh, processes and can also be used for performing in-memory processing of data stored in the data grid. We are making the core of that commercial product available in open source in Coherence Community Edition. Uh, we, we continue to offer Coherence as a commercial product, but now have a new open source option. Right. So uh, why uh, why is Oracle open sourcing Coherence? Second is that what would be the the governance of Coherence Committee? Will it be like Oracle maintained project as, you know, uh, one of the most popular, you know, VM solution virtual box is from Oracle. Uh, it's an Oracle project or a lot of time companies move their pro projects into a neutral foundation. So there are two piece question. Why are you doing it and what would be the governance of the project look like? Yes, yes. So uh, first, I, I just want to make sure that I, I make the point we're enabling Helidon 2.0 and Coherence Community Edition in open source to attract developers and to provide technologies for developers to build Java microservices that are fast, that are performant, and can easily be scaled up to meet mission critical requirements. So why are we open sourcing Coherence specifically is we want to attract the open source developer community to use the coherence technology. Uh, and if you could repeat your other question, then I'll, I'll answer that one as well. Right. The other question is, what would be the governance model for these projects look like? Will yes. it be, uh, right. yeah. So, uh, you know, our sources are available in GitHub. We accept contributions from the community. Um, certainly the initial release of coherence community edition is Oracle led because we've taken what were previously closed source Oracle sources and put them into an open source GitHub repository. Uh, we accept contributions from the community. Um, we, you know, I, I assume the development in the immediate future will be led by coherence de Oracle developers who work on coherence, but we welcome community contributions. Uh, and uh, we, we have not moved this into a foundation at this time. Um, that might be something we'd consider for the future, but at this point, just open source uh, available on GitHub. Right. Well, this may be a tricky question. There's a difference between uh -oh. just open source. <laughs> uh, there is a difference between just open sourcing something and putting it on GitHub versus actively building a community around that. And as you mentioned, that one of the reasons you are building it because you want to attract developers, which also means that you are not just throwing the code on GitHub and say, hey, you know what, this is the code you can do. You do want to actively work on building a community around it. So what efforts or resources you're putting in to build a community around it? Yeah, the, the first thing we're doing is delivering the announcement. Um, so we're making the sources available. Uh, we're providing documentation. Um, we're telling people about it. We're conducting interviews like this one. Um, we will be recruiting developers to contribute to the initiative. And just uh, as, as an aside, uh, for a number of years, Coherence has provided open source incubator projects, which provide the opportunity for developers to contribute to the future evolution of coherence. So we'd, uh, we'd attempt to leverage the community that's been contributing to those projects in the past to future development of coherence community edition. When you look at cloud and space, there are so many options, you know, the landscape is so complicated and so rich. So, uh, how do you plan to position, you know, uh, the on when there are already so many frameworks for Microsoft? What is the what is what is either unique about it, or why why should somebody come to it? Yeah, um, so we see uh, there's as you say there's a variety of options for building microservices. Uh, so step one I would say is Helidon, and by the way, coherence also is a Java technology. So it's a set of libraries for building Java microservices using the most popular programming language. So that's one uh, differentiation or segmentation that we're using. Uh, within uh, the frameworks that can be used for developing Java microservices, uh, we see, uh, let's say, the, the most uh, 
full featured and perhaps complex frameworks and you know some of them are well known like Spring Boot or Drop Wizard or, or maybe at the high end. Uh, those are popular frameworks, perhaps you know somewhat more complex over the uh, as they've evolved over the years. So that's maybe a, a high end of Java microservices frameworks. Uh, in, in a mid tier, we see micro profile based frameworks. So there's a number of offerings in that space: um, Pyara, uh, T- Tommy Tribe, IBM, Red Hat have offerings in that space. Um, and then at the, the low end, we see micro frameworks uh, with like Micronaut, for example, which are the, the most lightweight options available. Heladon we position as, we, as an option for both those who are seeking a micro profile standards-based offering uh, with some assistance for developers, uh, enable declarative programming, use of annotations, et cetera, for building microservices. That's where Heladon MP is targeted. And we also offer Heladon SE as the most lightweight micro framework or in that category. And in the case of Heladon, uh, so we offer the standards-based, uh, annotation-based programming style offering, the, the most lightweight offering, and both support GraalVM native image, which uh, you know, from our perspective is unique. Uh, so we, we provide a, an offering which supports two different pro- programming styles, both of which support GraalVM native image for extremely lightweight microservices and for microservices which are can be scaled up very rapidly or scaled back down as capacity requirements dictate. By the way, Haladon has out of the box integration with coherence so you can easily build up a microservices architecture which can scale to use a scalable data store like coherence uh, as opposed to data, you know, traditional databases in your backend. I do want to. Awesome. Uh, thank you Will, so much for taking time out on uh, and explaining not only these two, two product projects, but also the whole ecosystem on it. And I look forward to talk to you again when the, the 3.0 release or maybe 2.1 release is out. <laughs> we, we have more coming over the next several months. So we'd, we'd be delighted to, uh, to do that. Swap. No, I appreciate the time. I do want to reach out to the developer community to let them know that Oracle is delivering technologies in open source that they can use today for building state-of-the-art microservices applications. And we'd love for them to come to our, uh, come to GitHub, contribute, um, use our Maven repositories for building out uh, the next generation of applications.